Hello everybody, um, welcome to the Too Good To Be True podcast. I am your host, the Pascal Mayana, and we got a lot to talk about the Super Bowl 58 that took place. History is written in the book, in the Super Bowl, and I hope everybody enjoy to listen to this podcast, Too Good To Be True podcast. With Pascal Mayala, a.k.a. Marichal, a.k.a. Black, Pe- Black Leopard, a.k.a. Black Phantom. Now, let's talk about the Super Bowl. First of all, we will say this. Before I start talking about it, if you love the, if you love the podcast, follow me. Follow this podcast on Sp- only on Spotify podcast named Too Good To Be True with Pascal Mayala. And also, if you want to follow me, follow me on Twitter, Belly versus PMM, or on my Twitter or thread, Pascal slash Mayala slash 15. Now, let's talk about the Super Bowl right now. First of all, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs I'm beating the 49ers 20, 25 to 22 in overtime. So why 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 they had all of overtime? So for the for the people who don't know the new rule of the overtime, the new rule for the overtime is if one team make a touchdown, that means the other team had to score to make another touchdown. So to be equivalent. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, why we have we have that rule, that new rule? Well, if you remember the 2021 playoff, it was against the Chiefs versus the uh, uh, the Bills, and the Chiefs had the ball, and 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 not only that had the ball and win the game, but they led the other team to have to have their chance to. To go for it for another, for a touchdown, so that's why they had submitted the rule of the OT. But congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes won his third Super Bowl MVP. He is joining with the elite, such as Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Troy Aikman, and actually Terry Bradshaw and. Bart Starr, are the only person and the only team, and also John Elway, to go back to back, Super Bowl win. What did I? What? What's my thought on the Super Bowl? I thought the first half was boring. I tell you what, I thought this uh, the first half. It was ten to three. A a a, a, a boring first half. Then the second half has begun, where both teams traded traded touchdown, and also which they led to the overtime. And there was there was moments in this game that I thought the Forty Nine almost had a chance to beat them. If the, if the kicker did not miss the field goal, I think they would they should, would have won the game. And 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 that um and that the and that they should have won the Super Bowl, but it didn't happen, which led to the overtime. Patrick Mahomes is special. Let's be honest. Patrick Mahomes showing us this is his era. We had back in the day the uh, uh the Steelers in the 70s, the 49ers in the 80s, the Cowboys in the 90s. The Patriots in the 2000 and 2010. And now we have the Kansas City Chief era. 
The Patrick Mahomes era, I might add. I apologize. Patrick Mahomes had 33 yards, 333 yards. He averaged 7.2. He had two touchdowns and one interception. His QBR was 75.8%. And his ratings, it was 99.3%. And 34, 34 catches and 46 attempts. And he got sacked like what? He got sacked like what? Three, three out of eight in this game? Compared to to uh, Tom, uh, to uh, Brock Purdy, we'll talk about him later. His uh, weapon number one, his weapon number one, Travis, Travis Kelsey, he had a, 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 a 93 yard not re- receiving. He averaged 10.3, zero touchdown, 22 long. He was targeted 10 times. Compared to that, I said. That um, that um, my my X factor that I said the other day. The X factor, Isaiah Pacheco. Eighteen carries, fifty nine yard. He averaged three point three, and long ten ton long during his rushing. The defense. I would I would give you, I would say this for the defense. The defense we gotta give them props. We gotta give them props because they showed up when the offensive in the offensive side did not show up. We gotta give love for Chris Jones. We gotta give love to Willie Gay. We gotta give love to the rest of the crew on the defensive side. But also, let's give love to, I thought he should have been MVP, but but unfortunately now, Malcolm Hardman, who has, he, he had, he had received three times 57 yard average, 19, 19 point, point uh, average, one touchdown. He was targeted three times. His longest was 52 to score the uh, the overtime touchdown. Let's say also. Love to Marquez Valdez Cantlin, MVS. I want to say 20 yards. He averaged 6.7. One touchdown, long 16, targeted five times. He received three times. Let's give him love to him too because he balled out. Kind of balled out. <laughs> There was no, there was no really a highlight for the right receiver and the tight end on the chief side. But let's go back to the Patrick Mahomes. If you have, if you have to ask me, where in, in where in, in the tiers, where do you rank him? In, in any tiers quarterback. He's belonged to the first tier of QB with Joe Montana and Tom Brady. He's up there. Compared to a tier two or tier three. Patrick Mahomes. Is in a good discussion. Just not yet. But he's in the discussion. Now that he had three Super Bowl, will he surpass? Not not Tom Brady yet, ladies and gentlemen. Will he surpass Joe Montana? If the Chief go back to back to back to the Super Bowl, because this, because 
Never before in the Super Bowl, a team went three Super Bowl conservative and win three of them. Now, the Patriots never done it. The, the, 49er, the 49ers never done it. The Dallas Cowboys never done it. The Pittsburgh Steelers never done it. And the Green Bay Packers in the 60s never done it. Are we talking about a dynasty with the with the with the chief? The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. They belong in the, the dynasty. They belong in a conversation with the Patriot, the 49ers. I don't know about the Broncos, but I have to think about it again. The Cowboys, the Steelers, and the rest of the team as, let's say, second place. I will say that. Patrick Mahomes, congratulations. Your third, uh, third uh, Super Bowl MVP, which you well deserve. Because if you remember, remember the season, in the beginning of the season, the chief, especially in the in the rivalry series, couldn't catch a goddamn ball in the first half. The second half, things got a little bit better. But when the playoffs the playoff started, the chief were were rolling. Beating the, the Bills, beating the Baltimore Raven. Actually, actually, before that, in the wild card, beating the Dolphins in the cold weather in Arrowhead. Goes on the road. On my hat, goes on the road, beating the Bills. Beating the Baltimore Raven in Lamar. Lamar Jackson Stadium in Baltimore. Now in the Super Bowl in Las Vegas, home of the Los Angeles Raiders. Uh, before I continue, I was surprised that there was no Raider fan on the stadium because it will be very interesting to me. It will be very interesting to see the the Raider fan in the in the Super Bowl, but. I talk about their fans, not their players. I talk about fans. Like I said, beating the Baltimore Raven at in a, on the road, going to the Super Bowl, beating a, a, the 49ers, a, 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 well, a, a, a revenge story. A rematch, I might add. I guess the, the, the same team that, that, that Patrick Mahomes won in Super Bowl 54 in Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Now, can he catch Tom Brady? That's the question I let you guys have in the discussion in the house. That's all I gotta say about that. We're gonna take we'll we will take a break for one minute, then we will talk about the San Francisco 49ers. Now, let's talk about the team that lost. The San Francisco 49ers. This was Brock Purdy's uh, first uh, uh, Super Bowl appearance. So, Brock Purdy averaged 255 yards. 
23 completion, 38 attempt, average 6, 6.7. He got sacked one out of four. His QBR is 69.8. His rating is 89.3. We got to give love. Because I said that Brock Purdy should be the X factor. I didn't say Christian McCaffrey. I did not say Debo Samuel. You know, Debo Samuel did not have the... Uh, I believe he, in the rushing, he did not have a great performance. But also, as a receiving, he, he he was fine. But we'll get to him a little bit, little bit later. Not uh, George Kittle. Even though he was hurt in in those in those in, in, in the play, not even Cal Juice Juice. Sorry, I'll botch his name again. Just uh, Cal Juice Juice Sick Juice Sick. Yeah. The defense. The defense was okay. The defense was okay. I will give credit to that. The defense play hard. But also, I will say this. There was, there was a lot. I mean, there was a lot of injuries in, the, in this game. I mean, in the, like I said, like I said, the, like I said, the first half was boring. The second half was very interesting. Like I said. But... Christian McCaffrey. Had 80 yard. Let, let's say he had 80 yard. He averaged uh, 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 how he was rushing 22 times with no touchdown. I thought he was he was fantastic. Even though in the beginning he did he, he did fumble the ball. Uh, I know that was his first Super Bowl, but don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Uh, uh, um, CMC. Don't ever do that again. Debo Samuel. He didn't have did not have the good the game. He did not have a good game. Thirty three yard. Uh, three times he received. He received three times. He averaged eleven long, twelve targeted, eleven times. But also, let's also Chris McCaffrey as receiving. He did get a touchdown. I'm gonna admit that he did. But Debo Samuel was pretty much injured. Half uh, he played, but he played with injuries in, in during the, the during the Super Bowl. But also, George Kittle, I think that was the worst performing in George Kittle's Super Bowl in his career. And I meant it with all due, with, with all respect, all due respect. Now, the Cal Shanahan. Gamble or he choked because that's what's going to be talked about in his legacy. He's a good coach that took the team to twice in the Super Bowl but cannot get the, the, the job done. Are we going to say that Cal Shanahan choked? Or gamble himself. I think people will say he choked. Or people will say he gambled. To me, he did both. He did both. He gambled and he choked. Because you can see. Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan in the in the lineup. He was stressed compared to an Andy Reid, who been there, done that, 
Never stress. That's why if what when I, I was listening to Shaq a couple of years ago about coaching. There's been a, a difference between a coach, a good coach, and a great coach. A good coach can let can, can lead you to the playoff or maybe to the finals. But, can, but cannot get the job done. And you can see the good coach will stress. Especially when it's the final minute. Compared to a great coach who been there, done that, never stress, like a Phil Jackson, like a Pat Riley, a little bit of Steve Kerr, or Red Outback. Those coaches are considered great. Or Greg Popovich, I might have had too. So, and you can see in the sideline that Kyle Shanahan was stressed. I don't know what his legacy is for him, but. I think he, I think he learned a valuable lesson. I think we, I think all good coach need to learn the, their lesson. Do I think they will go back to the playoff? Yes. Do I think they will go back to the Super Bowl? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, look at the NFC. The NFC is wild open. They should be the favorite, by the way, too, next year or so. But let's, let's go back to Brock Purdy. I thought Brock Purdy played a good game. There was some, uh, 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 not missed call, there was an uh, opportunity when he was throwing and the right receiver couldn't catch it. I thought he played good, in my opinion. Not great, but good. Not that people will ask me, does he belong to a, a he belong to a, a, a elite? No, uh, he's not an elite quarterback. He's a good quarterback. And people will tell me the game manager versus the, the game changer thing. Even though I said that he's a game manager, it doesn't mean that he's a bad quarterback. Even the great quarterback have to manage the game. The great quarterback like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, a Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Montana, John Elway, the list goes on. They have to learn how to manage the game. As much are, are, are that they are elite. But they have to find a way to manage the game. Even a Dan Marino, who never won a Super Bowl. He always managed the game. A Jim Kelly of the world. Um, who else? Who else lost the Super Bowl? Even Josh Allen, for crying out loud, they need to control to, uh, to manage the game. But overall, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Hate to see a, a, a heartbroken uh, the, uh, the the losing team because I'm not always focused on the winning team. I've, I'm also focusing on the. The losing, the loser, the losing team, because it's, I know, I know they always say, there's always there's a quote, they always say, they always say that that um sorry my bad that um nobody remembers second place, 
Nobody remember the second place team. Nobody remember the losing team. And that is kind of true. Nobody will remember the losing team. But once again, I'm not, I'm not counting down the 49ers. They will be going back to the playoff. And that the NFC, like I said, the NFC is wide open. I can see three, three teams. But but we will discuss that later. We'll get a break, a couple of seconds, then uh, we'll talk about the halftime performed by Usher. Now, let's talk about the halftime performance. Usher Ramon in Las Vegas, sponsored by Apple Music. <laughs> Apple Music, people. What's my thought on the halftime performing? I thought it was good. Not great, but good. Usher knows that to deliver a performing. Now, do I think it is special? No. And a matter of fact, I give the halftime a B plus. And the reason why a B plus, it got nothing to do with the performing. It's got to do with the Twitter, or formerly X, formerly Twitter. It has been no, I've been known that Alicia Keys will perform. With Usher in the halftime, and and that part spoil the spoil the surprise. I'll be honest with you, because people asking the question, who's gonna be in the halftime, and they try to find information, and then they put it on Twitter, and that ruined the surprise for the fan. The per, the, the 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 person who did that, he should be ashamed of himself. He should be ashamed because you know I like surprise, and and, and in this day and age we cannot even get a surprise. Unlike uh, two years ago when uh, when uh, when uh, Dr. Drip uh, hosted the super uh, the halftime show with Eminem, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige, we did not know Fifty Cent will be there. That was a surprise. Even Anderson Pack, you saw that in the Super Bowl. That was a surprise. But I gotta admit that he did perform the song that I like. OMG. Yeah, it was a surprise with Lil John and uh, Lil John and Ludacris, which they should be. In, in, in the in the in the halftime show. But also her her with her guitar. That was a surprise. Also Jermaine Dupree. To me, that was a surprise. And then the Alicia Keys. Usher performed one of my favorite songs. OMG Yeah Caught up. That was a great song, by the way. That's a great song performing. And um, and there was two songs that that got no business. Actually, just uh, after three songs got no business to be in there. My boo, but I know Alicia Keys was there. So who else? I will not complain because I love Alicia Keys. I'm a huge fan of her. And uh, burn and confession. And you got it too, but you got it. That was a great. That's one of my song too. So, but if you liked it, I will not complain. Is your opinion? 
not mine. And and by the way, roller skating at halftime in the Super Bowl. Oh my God, that was a that was a surprise. I gotta admit that that was a surprise. That was a surprise to me. Now, where do I rank? Like I said, to one to ten, I give it a six. I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more so a uh, uh, performer from Usher. Thank God I didn't put it on my Twitter. Thank God I didn't uh, put it on Instagram. But I will get, I'll give Usher his props. Las Vegas, he does have a residence in Las Vegas. Everything, the halftime I want, well, the song that I wanted, he put it. I gotta admit that that whoever host well I don't want to say it but I'll say it later or maybe I'll say it now whoever is gonna host Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans has to be special I know I know I, I, this is not me this is not me this is not what the rumor said this is my opinion if Little Wayne have to host Super Bowl 59. And I think it makes sense. He should bring Little Wayne and Co. Who do I think should be in the Super Bowl have to have performing with him? I would say this. Drake. Nicki Minaj. Uh, Young Money. I don't know what what, what is the his uh, relationship with... Um, with uh, Birdman. Bring Master P. No limit. Juvenile. Bring him bring him in the halftime. That would be special. In New Orleans. The best place to to host Super Bowl. If I if, if I to, if I said this, I love New Orleans because I'm a New Orleans Saints fan. Yeah, I'm an underdog. So, so for the people who don't know, uh, wh- who's your favorite team in the NFL? Is my New Orleans Saints. If I told you that that if if New Orleans hosted every year the Super Bowl, I would not complain at all. The food is gay, uh, great, sorry, not gay, but great. Uh, the access is easy. I mean, I mean, everything, easy access. I mean, the food, everything is great in New Orleans. Everybody should go to New Orleans. Maybe one day I should visit, visit New Orleans. That should be on my bucket list. If Lil Wayne... Host uh, 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 um, New Orleans, which it makes a lot, of, a lot of sense because number one, he's born in New Orleans. Two, that's his hometown. And three, this is where his career started in New Orleans. If I may, may say, that if Lil Wayne hosts in New Orleans, because he said that multiple times, that he wants to host in his hometown, New Orleans, it will make a lot of sense. Jay Z, let Lil Wayne host New uh, uh, next year halftime Super Bowl new, in New Orleans. If you ask me which song, in my opinion. Which song that he had he will perform? This is me. Don't. This is not from Twitter. 
This is not from rumor from people. This is coming out from me. I will say this. I merely fireman, lollipop, maybe some feature with Drake, maybe some feature with Nikki, Young Money, add Master P, No Limit, maybe having a surprise uh, guest, like Juvenile. That's all I got to say about that. After the break, we will talk about next and the next uh, 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 the next uh, uh, season. Who who do you think who will go, go to the playoff? And also one thing also if if Andy Reid belonged to the in the conversation of the greatest coach of all time. Let's take a break for couple of seconds, then we'll talk about it. Now, let's talk about Andy Reid. Where does Andy Reid rank in the all-time greats coach? Andy Reid, in my opinion, belong in the conversation with Bill Belichick, Jimmy Johnson, Tom Landry, Vince Lombardi, Chuck Knowles. Who else? Maybe Mike Shanahan. Not Cal Shanahan, but Mike Shanahan. And Tom Floor. He should be in, in, the, in that conversation. Never in the wildest dream. The Andy Reid had a, a, a great quarterback. I mean, if you look Andy Reid's career, he had Donovan McNabb, Alex Smith, Michael Vick, all, all three uh, a good quarterback. But not on the level at Patrick Mahomes. And also, he wore my number 15. My, my, my favorite number to wear in number 15. So, so I am a little bit biased. So he, uh, he wore my number 15. And I wear number 15. And I'll just, just a little bit brief. Then I'll continue to talk about Andrew Reid. Um, the number 15 to me is special. Because growing up, and uh, in, uh, in, I grew up in Ottawa, born in Germany. Grew up in Ottawa, Canada. My favorite player was Vince Carter. Because back, remember, in Ottawa, we don't really have a basketball team. We have a hockey team and a football team, but in the CFL, but, uh, but uh, you, know, you know. But growing up in Ottawa, Vince Carter was everything. He did not just represent Toronto, but he represented the whole country of Canada. And that's why I love number 15, because of Vince Carter. Also, the building that I, that I grew up, 1525 after Vista Drive, southeast of Ottawa. And also, uh, the reason, other reason, because of Carmelo Anthony. Remember when he was playing with Denver Nuggets? He wore number 15. Also, that's, that's also the reason, also, why I love number 15. But let's go back to Andrew Reid. Andy Reid should be in the discussion with the great QB, uh, sorry, not QB, but a great coach like um, Bill Belichick, Tom Landry, Jimmy Johnson, uh, Mike Shanahan. 
I know Max Shanahan have uh, two Super Bowl, but he's b- belong to that conversation. Tom Floor, Chuck Nose, Vince Lombardi. They should sit in the head of the table. They should sit in the table having this conversation. And in this era, there's no better coach than Andy Reid. I, 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 you, know, I, 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 you know, you got Mike Tomlin, who also won the Super Bowl. But he's, I don't know if Mike, uh, Mike Tomlin is in the conversation, but if he is, good. I will not complain at all, people. I will not complain. But I will say this Andy Reid belongs in the conversation with Bill Belichick. But we don't, but also, I'm gonna admit that we don't know his future. Also, will he retire? Will he continue to coach? We don't know. But um, but um, he should be in the conversation. Now, let's talk about next 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 year season. Who do you think to who can make it to the playoff, and? Before I start, this is my prediction. I know I know it's too early in the prediction. But who do you think Pascal who's going to be in the in the playoff uh uh next year? I know the schedule. I don't know if the schedule is uh 